We gonna build a clock today, yeah. <laughs> In this video, we are going to build a digital clock. So basically, I'm going to walk you guys through how to build a digital clock from scratch with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript step by step. So first things first, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a folder called digital clock and then open that in Atom, okay? And I'm going to be using a program called Hyper. Hyper is a command line interface and it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, so it's free, okay? And the reason why I use it is because I'm just a lot faster in command line rather than the GUI, okay? So if you guys are not comfortable with the command line, just go here in the desktop and just use the GUI, okay? Just do new folder, name it digital clock, right? And then just drag and drop that into Atom and then it'll open that in Atom, okay? But I'm not, I'm not gonna be using that, okay? So I will be using Hyper from the command line. So I'll go into desktop, desktop, and then I will create a folder called, if you guys don't have like the packages and stuff, MD might not work, so do Mcdur, okay? It's the same thing. MD and I'll do digital clock, Okay, and then I'll open that in Atom. Cool, so now it will open that up here, as you can see, right? So now I'll create three files here, okay? I'll create index.html, styles.css, and app.js. So again, I'll use the command line. You can just do new file like this here, and then do index.html, styles.css, and app.js, but again, I'm gonna use the command line, so I'll do index.html, styles.css, and app.js. Cool, so now I have three files, right? And you're like, Tenzin, why do you have three files, okay? Um, so if you guys are like brand new to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I highly, highly recommend checking out my free course on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript basics, where I walk you guys through every single, like all the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if you go through that, you will be fully ready for this. But if you have done some HTML, CSS in the past and you understand a little bit, this course should be still good to go for you, okay? If you have some experience in the past. But if you're not comfortable, again, check out my course. So the reason why I have three files is because I want to keep my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript separate, okay? It's never a good idea to write all you know, different languages in one file. We can, right, but we don't want to, okay, it's because it's a bad practice. So here, what I'm gonna do is first, we're not gonna be doing too much of JavaScript. We'll first have to style this clock uh, and make the HTML and CSS work, and then we will add JavaScript at the end, okay? So let's do that. So let's, I'm gonna close this app.js and then toggle the sidebar by doing command KB. So now, as you can see, we have this uh, clock here on the left-hand side, okay? So first of all, I'll do HTML, cool. And then I'll give it a title of digital clock, okay? And then go here and then say ASDF, whatever, okay? Let's see if it works. First, we'll have to open that in Finder and then double click and then it opens it up. And we can see that it's working, right? ASDF, ASDF shows up. And let me move that here, cool. So as you can see, we have a box here, right? Uh, so for that, we'll make a div and then we'll give it a class of main, okay? So that we can target it later with CSS, okay? And with JavaScript if we need to. And then inside of that, we'll give another div, okay? Because we wanna make this badge Okay, we wanna make this badge. So then we'll give it a div of badge. Okay, clock badge, whatever you want. You can call it anything you want. And then for that, I'll say clockly. Okay, and then let's refresh this here. Boom, okay, so we have clockly, right? Um, and then let's go back. Uh, we also want an inner box right there, right? We have another box right here. So then for that, Again, this box, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, this box right here. So for that box, we will do div and give it a class of clock, 
okay? And then inside of that, we'll pass in some dummy data for now, dummy numbers, right? Hours, minutes, and seconds. Um, and then later on, we'll pass in actual dynamic values with JavaScript, okay? Right now, we're just gonna pass in some static data that we're just gonna manually type. So we'll give it some span tags. Again, the reason why we're using span tags is because it's inline. It's not gonna start off on a new line, okay? So we're just gonna do zero to, let's say it's two o'clock, and let's do another span tag. And uh, this one, I'll change it to like uh, 30. And then let's do like 23 seconds. Okay. So now if I look at it here, refresh, now we have 0, 02, 30, 23. And then colon, we'll just add it for now. Again, we're going to add all of this in with JavaScript, but um, for now, we're just testing it, okay? So, all right, so we have that. And also, in the span tags, we'll uh, give each of these span tags some IDs, okay? ID equals, so the first one is going to be hour, right? Hours, um, hour, and then this one is going to be minute, and this one is going to be second. Okay, so now refresh, it's still the same, right? So now we're pretty much done with the HTML part. Now we'll have to sexify it, okay? So let's go here to CSS. And right now, if I do background, let's do body and then do background to like red or something, it's not gonna work, right? Because we haven't linked our styles.css to our HTML. Um, so for that, we'll have to do link and then in the href, we'll have to uh, give the folder like route, what is, where does it lie? And if you, if we look at it here, it's just styles.css in the same folder. So we can just say dot slash styles.css or just do styles.css because it's in the same folder, okay? Styles.css and now if I refresh, it's gonna work, right? So now the background is red. If I change it to white, it's going, going to be white, right? Okay, so now we have our CSS working. Let me toggle that again. So the first things first, uh, before we write any code, what we wanna do is we want to remove some default styles that comes with every browser. So as you can see here, if you look closely to our, um, you know, Clockly and this thing, it starts a little bit, uh, you know, down and right, right? There's a space between that and the top left corner of the browser. We can clearly see this if I give the main class a background of let's say black or something, okay? You can clearly see that. You see that, right? Now, let's go up top and do uh, padding to zero and then margin to zero and then box sizing border box, okay? So now if I refresh, it gets rid of that. Okay, so now this box sizing border box, if you don't know that, again, check out my course, but uh, basically it adds the padding and border to the width itself so that you don't have to calculate it yourself, okay? So uh, we have that, and now let's go back to the clock, how it looks. So now we have the, um, the box first, so what we'll have to do is first give it a background color of not that, but something else like 333, um, and let's go here, refresh. Okay, that's too dark. We'll have to do something like DDD. Let's go here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think it's CCC, so very simple colors, guys, CCC. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now uh, we have that, and let's give it a width, okay, because it's not spanning 100%, it's small, right? So what we wanna do is we'll give it a width of, if you go back here, uh, let's do this. It's about, I don't know, 400 pixels. Okay, we'll just do width of 400 pixels. Okay, let's go here, refresh. Okay, cool. And now we also want it towards the center, right? So to center something, again, it's margin zero auto. Okay, or just do margin auto. But we'll, we'll do zero auto for now and then refresh. Okay, cool. That looks good. We'll also give it a height. Okay, so let's go back. The height is, I think it's 175, okay. 175, height is 175 pixels, cool. Ref refresh, all right, that looks good. And now we need to push it down, right? Push it down, so to push it down, we can just do margin. 
Instead of zero here, which controls the Y axis, the auto is basically controlling the X axis and we're just saying auto and it just centers it. But now for the, instead of zero here, we'll just do 100 pixels from the top and bottom. Bo the bottom doesn't matter because you can't really see there are nothing else on the page, so it doesn't really matter. So we'll just do refresh and it pushes it down, right? So we're uh, pretty much done with the main styles the styles for the main div. So now we'll uh, add some styles for our badge, okay, the Clockly badge. So now let's go here and then do, whoops, I got rid of the braces there. Okay, so now for the actual uh, badge, we have the class badge, right? So we'll do dot badge, and then we'll give it a background of, what is the color? I think it's E66357, E66357, okay? And then refresh, cool. And now we also want the color to be white, text color to be white, refresh, cool. Um, let's give it a padding of like 30 pixels. Um, nope, too much, too much, too much, nope, nope. Let's do like five pixels and 10 pixels. That looks pretty good, okay, all right. And we'll also change the font family to sans serif, okay. Okay, that looks better. And now we'll also uh, make it bold. Yep, we'll also make it bold. So we'll do font, weight, bold, refresh, cool. And now we'll also make this, um, uh, give it a width, okay. Give it a width of, uh, what do we want here? Um, let's see. We probably want it to be like 100 or 95 pixels. Let's just do 96 pixels, okay? Um, cool. All right, that looks pretty good. And now we'll have to center it again, right? But now if you notice something here, we didn't just center it, we, um, it's, it's a little, it, it's pushed a little upwards, right? Um, so to make that happen, we can't really use margin zero auto, okay? Margin auto is not gonna work because we'll have to push it outside of our parent diff. Like again, if you look at our HTML, the badge sits inside of the main, right? And now we have to position it outside. We have to get it get a little outside of the parent diff. So how do we do that? Okay. So if you, if you have taken my CSS course, you probably know the answer, right? Um, because if we do margin zero auto, it's not going to work here. Okay. Margin zero auto is going to center it, but it's not going outside of it. Right. And if you try to play with the y-axis here by 10 pixels, it's going to push it down, which is not what we want. But let's say we want to push it up like negative 10 pixels. Well, it's gonna push, it's gonna go up, but it's gonna push the whole thing up, which is not what we want, okay? So that's not gonna work. So to make this work, what we do want is, we want positioning, okay? So we need to give it a position of absolute, okay? And then top, if, if I do top zero, uh, left zero, Again, guys, check out my CSS course. It's pretty easy to find if you guys are not familiar or don't quite understand how positioning works in CSS because it can get a little tricky. So if I do this right now, it's gonna start off from the top left corner of the browser. And now I can place it anywhere I want by doing like 100 pixels from the top and it'll push it down. If I do play the left, 50 pixels, right? I can do that. But now I don't want it to start from the top left corner of my browser. What I do want to start from is top left corner of my main div, this div, this parent div, okay? I don't want it starting from the top left corner of my browser. So for that to happen, we need to give the parent a position of something other than static or inherit, okay? So we'll do relative, cool. Now refresh, and now if I do top zero and left zero here, let's see what happens, okay? I'll do zero and then and then zero and refresh here. Now it starts from the top left corner of the main div, which is the parent div, okay? And the reason why we need to start it from there is so that when our when we resize the browser width, right, we want it to be centered like this regardless of the width. And if, if we started from the browser's top left, that can change, okay? That's not gonna stay the same. So here, 
uh, we're starting it from the top left corner of the parent. So then it's always constant. Okay, stays the same and stays in the center. So here, what we have to do is say left of, <clears throat> let's do like 40%. Um, okay, that's pretty center. And um, top, instead of, if, if we give it a positive, it's gonna push it down, but we don't want it down, we want it up. So I think negative 15 pixels should work. Cool, negative 15 pixels is Gucci, Gucci. All right, so now what we need to do is, what do we need to do? <laughs> okay, so now we need to style the clock itself. Okay, so we have this clock here and we'll have to style that now. So which is pretty simple, go to styles and again do dot clock, right? Because we have the clock class here. And now for that, we'll have to make the background color. What do we, what's the background color here? Let me get that background to eb 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 so let's see boom okay that looks pretty good now i also need to okay the problem right now is that uh we also need to give some padding to our uh main div okay we don't have any padding here um so let's do 30 pixels padding cool so now it's towards the center, we have some space between our text and the border, okay? So that looks pretty good. And now I'll, let's go back to the clock and we'll do, first of all, text center, text align center. And then we'll also change the font size to something else like 55 pixels or something, okay? Let's refresh. Cool, so that looks pretty good. But now uh, we also needed to span 100% height. We, we need to give it a span of 100% height, okay? Because right now it's looking funky, so we'll do height of 100% and that'll make it, <clears throat> you know, 100% uh, within the main div, okay? Within the parent div. Cool, so that looks pretty good. And then now we also need to push it down towards the center, so for that we'll just use some padding, okay? Uh, there are other ways to center it vertically, but we're not gonna go into that. Let's just keep it simple. Uh, padding top of 35 pixels or so, and that should do it. Okay, that's too much. 30 pixels. Nope, let's do 25. Okay, that looks pretty good to me, okay? So here, I'm also using a different font, okay? Uh, it's a Google font, so how you use custom fonts in CSS is, so to, if, you, if you're gonna use Google fonts, which I recommend you do it, you go to fonts.google.com and then, Again, you can pick any font you want, but I am using a font called Orbitron, okay, which is suitable for a number, okay, like date format and things like that. So I'm just gonna use it, I liked it. So click on this uh, add button, the plus button, and once you have done that, click on this minus button, and then you can just copy this link right here and then paste it. So there are two ways to do it, the standard way and then the import way. I'll do it the standard way first to show you, so to do that, just copy that link and go here and you just paste that and that's it, okay? But I don't like doing that. I just, I'm usually, I usually use the CSS way, so I just do import, okay? So that import, you go to styles.css and at the very top of your CSS file, you just copy and paste it, okay? So now we can change the font family to something else other than what we have right now, okay? So what we can do is say font family is Orbitron. And there it is, right? So now um, we need to also push it down. Now it's not center because the font changed. So let's do 30 pixels. That looks good, 35, I don't know, 35. Cool, 35 is the best, is the answer. Okay, so now I think, oh, wait a second. Uh, we totally <laughs> forgot about the background, right? So the background here, uh, we have a pattern, right? We have a pattern background, beautiful background. Um, and if you guys are wondering how I created this pattern, I created with a tool, a uh, free tool, uh, it's called pattern.flaticon.com and you can basically create your own pattern. So if I refresh this, what you can do is just click on, you know, look look up anything you want and then just click click like this, okay? Just click, 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 and then you can position it where you want and then you can change 
the opacity, change the color, and do all kinds of st stuff, and then like make your own patterns, okay? So that's how I created this pattern, um, and I have it um, in my downloads, so I'm going to move it inside my digital clock folder, okay? But I'm not gonna drag and drop, I'm just gonna use the terminal for that, okay? So what I'll do is do, okay, boom. So now I have a pattern picture called uh, clock pattern, okay? So clock pattern looks like this. So now what, what I want is, I wanna go inside my CSS and change the background to not a color, but an image, okay? So what you do is do URL, use the URL keyword parentheses, and then give the directions to that file, okay? So here, since it's in the same folder, we can just do dot slash clock pattern or just do clock pattern, clock pattern, and then that's it, okay? Again, we can also do dot slash clock pattern, um, and that the dot here just means from this folder, okay? And then slash clock pattern is the file name it's, uh, itself, right? So if I refresh it here, boom, right? So now it is working. Our HTML and CSS part is done, and now we're gonna also, whoa, 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 hold on just there. I noticed something very subtle. Do you guys see it? Do you guys see it? Do you guys see it? No, no, okay. Um, so for the clock, we also want a border radius of, let's do four pixels. Okay, so now you can see that the edges are a little more smooth, right? Here we have it very smooth here, so now it's it matches that, okay? And if you guys are wondering how am I switching between these two tabs really quickly, I'm just doing command one, command two. In Windows, it's control one, control two, okay? Okay, guys, so that's it for the HTML and CSS part. In the next video, we're actually going to make the clock work with JavaScript, okay? We're gonna do the JavaScript part. And again, if you want the clock pattern image and the source files, go to whatsdev.com. And again, go to whatsdev.com to enroll in the full free course. It's 100% free. My goal here is to make my free course better than all the other paid courses out there, okay? Whether I will be able to do that or not, we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. And also I'm going to have quizzes and challenges on the website. And I'm actually working on a custom learning management system that I'm building with Node right now. It's probably gonna take some time, so I'm still gonna be using the Teachable platform. So for now, just go there and enroll. Yeah, so good things are coming. If you guys liked the video and enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. But other than that, catch you in the next one. Peace.